There will come a time when fascism would take over this great nation of ours and destroy the peaceful and economic ties we enjoy with our neighbours in Europe. They will come armed with their silver tongues and promising the earth be extremely vigilant. In so many ways, Winston Churchill foresaw not only the rise of Europe uh, as a great power in itself, as a united Europe, but he also foresaw, I think, the rise of uh, this aggressive form of conservatism that we see in Suella Braverman and Pretty Patel and the cohorts of people who are deriding people from other countries. And it is a form of fascism. We saw the other day a holding centre which was fast resembling a concentration camp. And the language, the rhetoric of people like Nigel Farage, who I think in real life is probably a very nice man, but he now sees himself as the banner waver, the flag waver of this new revolution against any form of migration. He's quite clear that as far as the deal struck today with Suella Braverman and the French is concerned, it's hardly worth the paper on which it's written. It will do nothing because the French have no interest in stopping people crossing the channel. Once they're in the water, it's our problem. This isn't going to reduce the people who are uh, the numbers of people who are crossing in any way. It's a lot of money that we are just giving to the French. We are paying uh, the French their wages. And it's absurd. It's an absurd situation to think that somebody else can do our job for us. The only way to solve this problem is to make it very clear who is and who is not illegal. And the only way to do that is to do the paperwork and to do it speedily. And to have a backlog which goes back to 2007, at least, is simply heinous. It's irresponsible. Uh, I think it borders on the criminal. It's a dereliction of duty. It's negligence. And it doesn't stop there. It doesn't stop with processing people from abroad. It's also felt by us here whenever we need the help of the Home Office. It simply isn't there. It's like McCavity. It's just gone. And it's presided over. The Home Office is presided over by um, a litany of hand-wringing wretches who point the finger, if they can get it out of their clenched fists, uh, who point the finger across the channel at people who are coming over in boats. It's like having um, Alex Belfield in the Home Office. It is disgusting. It is disgusting. And someone pointed out to me, someone sent me a photograph, and I'm really, I'm really impressed. Someone sent me a photograph today uh, of the statue of Churchill, which Farage uh, bemoaned this evening. I mean, it, once that record player starts, starts spinning, Farage doesn't stop. He bemoaned this evening how the statue of Churchill was desecrated by those people marching through London on Saturday, by the Albanians, desecrated with an Albanian flag. I see it as a mark of honor and respect. He sees it as desecration. And all he has to do is think back a few years to the desecration of Churchill's statue by a um, flag for Brexit now. Brexit now. I mean, I wonder if, I wonder if Churchill would have approved of Brexit at all. This was a man who was promoting alliances, alliances against communism, alliances between us and Europe. This was a man who had given his life to defending Europe. 
twice, World War I and World War II. I, I, I think someone is turning a blind eye. And, you know, Mr. Farage may be perfectly pleasant in real life, but the campaigns he is mounting are grotesque. I, I, I would love to challenge him. I would love to ask him, what have we achieved in this Brexit that you encouraged? What have we achieved in this Brexit daubed over Churchill's statue? What have we achieved? What have we achieved? In all this effort, all this effort, for what? And what are you doing, Mr Farage, to make it work? What are you doing? That's the bigger question. You ushered in this revolution, this change. And what are you doing? You're sitting on your backside in a television station, taking pints with buddies and chewing the cud. Shouldn't you be taking responsibility of this? You should take a seat in the House of Lords at the very least and be answerable, be held to account for what you ushered in. And maybe, maybe you have the answers that nobody in this second-rate government has got. Maybe you've got the answers, Mr Farage. This is a direct, a direct appeal to you. It's time for you to leave your plough and get back into office. Boris gave you the image. You do the job. I'm sure you'll do it better than many other people. But it's time to stop idling and drinking pints, Farage, and get down to the real work and take responsibility for what you encouraged. <laughs>